Coach, coming off of uh, the MLS opener, what's that dynamic of emotions like when you both see the banner unveiled, but you also know seconds later you have to kick off the first MLS match of the year? Yeah, it's it, sometimes it's challenging. I mean, you never know how the players are going to take it. Are they thinking about, oh, God, we were so good last year, and you know, then they got to fight and scratch and come out with a hard-fought victory. Your opponent gains a little advantage because he can just say, hey, you know what, let's make sure we, you know, put the champions in their place. There's lots of different little nuances there, but overall the day was great. It was a nice Sunday afternoon and, you know, people went home happy and, you know, Jordan scored a couple goals. So we were all smiles. From a process perspective, just that coming back, from a deficit, 1-0, just in the growth and the process. How important was that for the team? I get the win, but just from the team, how important was that in the process? Uh, well, it's always important because of the win, the points, and all that. Like you said, the mental side of that is, again, I'm trying to continue to push the narrative, which it's the truth. That team doesn't, they don't quit. They never give up. It is hard, you guys should do the research into the stats. It's not easy to collect points when you go down, when you're, when you're scored upon first. And I think we have to be really high up there as far as what league, other teams do around the league. And it's something I'm very proud of, it's good. And so how do you keep that messaging going? How do you get the young kids to learn, hey, you know what, we don't give up here. You, know, you might be down a couple goals, but we're still gonna play, that's, that's important. We've talked about you know certain miscommunications that have to happen in the back line. How can you uh, quickly develop that back line so the chemistry begins to be there? Are you talking about that goal? I'm just talking in general terms. Hard hitting questions. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I'm reading you loud and clear. Yeah, I was not happy about that. And okay. yeah, and O'Neill's body position, uh, Javi just letting the guy go. That coordination between the two center backs. You know, the guy coming off the channel, maybe. Kelvin gets a bump, slows him down. I mean, there was a few things wrong with that play. There was no pressure on the ball. They got to know how to drop, who's in charge of that. There were some, there were some pretty, uh, there were some very good coaching points on that play. And Jimmy already has the clips. We're already, you know, coaches have watched it. He'll show it to the players and uh, we'll correct some of those. Javier Ragas, obviously a guy that now is one of the veteran guys because he was here last year in that back line. How do you feel like he could take that ability to grow and take the He's, he's and always better? been good. Look, Javi's a good kid. He's here for the long term. He's a good he, he, He's a good pro. He's a good young man. I mean, last year was tough for him because I had him in the lineup. We won a bunch of games. I brought Ramon back. I mean, he had some challenges last year and he's a team player. He doesn't have any issue. He actually told Gonzo and Jimmy the other day that he actually likes to be pushed. And so as a coach, you always got to find the right balance. You can't kill him all the time, but you know, he's got to watch that and he's got to do better. And he's, he's, he's up for that type of coaching and that type of, uh, you know, criticism. He's got big enough shoulders to handle that. I've got a Jordan Morris stat for you. It's up to 17 goals, 14 assists in his last 32 games across uh, all competitions, club and country. So it's almost a uh, point a game or a goal and assist every game. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, have you seen him take a new leap over that time span? And if so, like, what do you think has led to that? I time? think the kid was super motivated after that injury that happened in, in El Salvador. I mean, you know, the whole, that whole storyline, we talked a lot about it, but the emotion, he's an emotional kid right ups and downs you know that day was horrific for our club and you know it's I told you guys it was like a black cloud that hung over the club for a while he had to get himself out of that he was the one not me I couldn't tell him anything he had to do it and judging by your statistical analysis he's done pretty well at getting himself out of a hole and coming back and playing up to his potential and the 14 assists is kind of what jumped out at me is that uh do you think that's a sign that this switch to the wing has maybe unlocked a part of his game that 
maybe he wouldn't have tapped into if he was just up top? Or? Yeah, I mean, look, if you go back all the way to his college days, you guys can again look at that. Did he have more goals and assists than maybe some other forwards? I, I, I don't know. Since he's been with us, since I've been around, I think he's always had that ability to play out here. You know, when he first arrived, his rookie season, he scored 12 goals, something like that. I don't know how many assists he had, but he's always such an important player in our attack because of his ability to get behind teams that he ends up in those positions where assists naturally come. So, you know, if he was a maybe not such a fast guy and he came into the box late, you know, maybe he might, maybe he might have a few more goals. He's the guy that's leading the charge. He's the one that's out front, passing the ball into the penalty box. I think that's just natural. Nico Ladero and Gustav Svensson back out there. Uh, what would be their status here? Like I said after the game, Gustav is in full, and Nico is in almost everything of full. And that one's just still TBD. We got to make sure that all, everybody gets cleared. Um, but yeah, everybody. Will Bruin was in full training today. Is there full, full. Is there any uh, concerns at all about uh, maybe this being a lingering thing for Nico or around no, the it's year? It's just one? part of the protocol. Look, you know, you guys all know Nico. The kid mm -hmm. wants to play. He he he'd be training extra if we didn't have to hold him back. We just got to follow protocol. So, you know, when he's ready, he's gonna he, he's get he's he's very close. When did he first tell you that he was feeling pain in his hamstring? Was that off season or last yeah, season? Or? He, he had some hamstring issues last season already. So. You know, we're, we're working to correct it. He, he's feeling better. I mean, you guys can watch him play. He's so happy to be back on the field. I mean, so easy to tell.